Hey, welcome back to Mr. Mig's Classroom. I'm Mr. Mig, and today I want to talk about the FAA Part 107 exam. Specifically, I just want to give you some tips about the exam and how to get prepared for the exam. But before I get started with that, I want to remind my viewers that now you can super like my videos as well as become a member. If you do this, it's given a small donation to the uh, channel. I would greatly appreciate it if uh, you super like my videos, even if it's just a dollar or two dollars. It would mean the world to me if you super uh, thanks my videos, uh, not super like, but super thanks my videos, um, or join and give a, even if it's a one or two dollar a month donation. So the super thanks is a one time thing, the joining is a monthly thing. Either way, if it, even if it's just one dollar, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, in this video though, uh, what I wanna talk about is the exam itself and how to get prepared for the exam. So I get a lot of questions on YouTube in the comments section about what to expect in the exam or what you can bring to the exam. So I wanted to talk about those things. So first thing I want to talk about is what you can bring when you go to take the FAA Part 107 drone exam. Um, so what you can bring is a calculator and a magnifying glass. You're allowed to bring a calculator, but it can only be a four function calculator like I have here. So add, subtract, divide, multiply. You're not allowed to have any type of scientific calculator. They won't allow that in the room, anything where you could like store data in. But something simple like this, you might have like a couple questions where you'll use it. I didn't actually use it, but some people do. I definitely have students who used it and we're glad they had it. So I do recommend bringing the calculator. You're allowed to have it, so you might as well bring it. Um, the other thing uh, is a magnifying glass. I'll tell you, if I didn't have my magnifying glass when I took the exam, I would have failed because, uh, well, I, you know, you've seen some of my videos, I wear glasses, so I need it. I've had some students who said they didn't need it. It's up to you, but again, you're allowed to bring it. Um, so those are the things that you can bring to the exam. Other than that, when you go into the exam room, they're gonna have you empty your pockets, put everything in a bag. They're gonna have you zip up the bag and then lock the bag. You're not allowed to bring anything else in the room. If you do, it's deemed as cheating and then you'll fail it. So only bring those approved items in. Um, they'll give you one of these books. So this is one of the books where you get a, a lot of the map questions from, where they'll give you little excerpts about the sectional chart maps. Um, just trying to find a random page here that has them. Sometimes they have like little graphs in them. Uh, but this is this is that booklet here that they'll give you. Uh, so you don't need to bring this. It, I, I'll put a link in the description below so you can have a link of like a digital copy of this. I know in some of my past videos, people put in the comment section that the link isn't working anymore. So I'll make sure to put a new link in there. Um, but I'll, I'll use this uh, sometimes for studying. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to buy one if you use the digital one. Uh, again, in the exam, they'll give you one. You're not allowed to bring your own anyway. But they will give you one of these so you can get those figures for those uh, math questions that you'll have in there. Um, when you go to take the test, some tips I can give you is just basic test taking principles. There are gonna be three answer choices. So you'll get a question and you'll get A, B, A, B, or C. Just three, you won't have four, but you have to choose between three possible answers. This actually makes it kind of easier. I mean, this makes it pretty easy. Really, when you think about it, you have a 33% chance of guessing it right. Here's a tip though. Most of the time, there's one obviously wrong answer and then two pretty good answers. So if you're, um, you know, if you're unsure about a question, mark out the wrong answer and then guess between the other two. Now you've got a 50% chance of getting them right. That increases your, your chances of getting them right or of passing the test because all you need is a 70 to pass. So if you just mark out one answer, that helps you by a lot. Uh, another tip that I'll give you with multiple choice is when you have questions that, um, say something like, you know, is it answer A, answer B, or is it answer both A and B? If you have that option of all of the above or both A and B, most of the time, that's the answer is both A and B or that all of the above answer. Now, I'm not saying all the time. If you feel like A is 100% correct, I'm certain about it, and then, you know, C gives you the answer choice of both A and B, and you think B is wrong for sure, don't choose C, right? Don't choose both A and B, choose A. But most of the time the answer, the correct answer seems to be both A and B or all of the above. I've done hundreds of practice questions for the part 107 and I'll say I've only seen one where it gave you that 
all of the above or both A and B answer choice where it wasn't that answer choice. So the vast majority of the time it is. So if you get to a question and you're not sure and you see that, um, both A and B or all of the above answer choice, my recommendation is to go with it. I think that's usually the right answer. Um, other than that, uh, what I see on the test is the majority of the questions are usually map-based questions. Now, I have had students or people on YouTube comment and say that wasn't the test they got. Every test is going to be a little bit different on that, but most of the time it's rules and regulations questions is what you'll get the most. Then you'll get map, uh, map questions the second most, so using those sectional chart map uh, maps. And then the third most are maybe weather questions. Then you'll get some few oddball questions like about um, the blood alcohol limit for flying a drone, which I guess would be rules and regulations, or the categories of drones, like category one, two, three, and four, which I will get to in a later video. People have been asking about that. Remote ID, you'll get some of those questions too. Um, but I, I say this because I really think knowing your airspace and knowing your maps are so important because most of my students tell me their, their tests are map heavy. So you really want to know those. For the rules and regs, make the flashcards, study those. Um, other than that, I really appreciate y'all watching. Make sure you give a thumbs up to the video, like and share. And if you want to give a th super thanks, I greatly appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.